How's it going guys? Good afternoon from Gatwick. Lauren's got the snacks ready. Back at it again, straight out. Grand Canaria, running a little late. We'll pick it up when we get there. Take a vegan and gluten free option. We also have a selection. Getting it safe you to be in your seats. Touchdown Grand Canaria. <laughs> Touchdown! Look at the colours, beautiful. We're rushing around, we're with a crew of people. We're gonna check into the hotel. A bit easy for <laughs> I'm starving, I need a shower. <laughs> Did I? That's a video. Yeah. In we go. Check this out. Oh, look at the mood lighting. I'm gonna come round, quick room tour. We're in a right rush. How you doing? Full shower. Lauren's getting creative, trying to get them angles. Just capturing them hotel aesthetic, you get me? <laughs> She's loving life, and I'm not gonna try and pronounce it but this is the name of the first hotel we're staying at. Oh God, here we go again. So we have arrived in Gran Canaria, one of eight of the Canary Islands. We're here with the tourism board, visit Gran Canaria. I'll be honest, I have no idea what to expect. All I know is we're here for four nights. We have got a jam-packed itinerary, as always. I feel like I always intro with that. I haven't looked at it too much, but what I do know is we're swapping hotel pretty much every day. That's the only thing with these press trips, they try and cram as much in as possible, obviously to market the destination. We've got about 20 minutes to get showered and we're going for dinner. Quickest turnaround ever. And I just had a thought while I was in my 30 second shower that you may have no idea where Gran Canaria is. So as you look at it on a map, it is a Spanish island. Spain is up here though. And as you can see, it's right off the coast of Africa. And there are the Canaries. You've got Fuerteventura, you've got Lanzarote, Tenerife, and we are right here. I have personally never been to any of the Canaries before. So very excited for it. Lauren, you've been where? Fuerteventura twice. Fuerteventura twice on holiday. Let's see what we can find. Not looking great, lads. They said 27 degrees. It's absolutely chucking it down. Welcome to Gran Canaria. Yes. Dry, but it's yeah. a lot of they have this soil. Alright, food time. We've come down to a place called Hotel Santa Catalina. It's set in the first ever botanical gardens of Gran Canaria. Beautiful. Uh, nice little setting. As you can see, the guys in there, it's a bit early in it. First day to be chucking a camera up in people's faces. And the restaurant next to it is called 1890 Botiguita. Hopefully, I pronounced it right. Let's get into some food. So, what can I don't. That's fine because I don't. Well, it's left on this. Oof. Good bit of food. Gonna keep it short and sweet. Just in a meeting with the guys, chatting away. Ready for bed, aren't we? Yeah, boy. It's been a long day of travel. We'll hit it hard tomorrow. Catch you bright and early. Good morning from the rooftop. How's that for a view? Spinning it round. Sun is out. It is quarter to nine. We've just come up for breakfast. I've ducked down into the shade. Gonna take you in for breakfast in a second. I needed that sleep. And I take back everything I said. I thought it was gonna be fast, fast, fast. But apparently we've got a pretty chill day today. We're in a place called Las Palmas de Gran Canaria, which is right up in the north. Apparently tourists don't really come up to the north that much. They're more down in the south, which I'm sure we're gonna visit at some point. But we're gonna get some food and head out and explore the old town. <laughs> Lauren is gonna be a happy chaffy. I'm already in. <laughs> Big avo toast for starters. Oh, it's banging. The bread is well nice. We're going for round two. Granola and yogurt. Quick in, quick out. About 12 hours, I think it was in total. On to the next one. Let's say it's divided in, in two areas. So we've come down to the old town, there's lots of yellows, oranges, reds, if I spin you round, reminds me of Madeira a little bit, a week on from there. And this is actually the capital of Gran Canaria, Las Palmas, I didn't realise. So we're gonna have a walk around here and take some photos, I think. I mean, my Spanish isn't fluent, but I take a guess that we've made it to the cathedral. <laughs> we're going out. Oh, I've lost Lauren, Lauren, Lauren. <laughs> Like Quasimodo up here on top of the bell tower. That is where we just were, down there somewhere. Welcome to Las Palmas in Gran Canaria. Quick note before we go back down from the top of the cathedral. Our guide just gave us nicknames. What is it? Carlos and Lorena. <laughs> we're Spanish now. Yeah, boy. Back down on the ground, quick cool story because I'm going to lose the group. These dogs were built and they were meant to be sent over to a garden in South Africa. Apparently when they got to the port, it's a legend, don't know how true it is, someone kind of tipped them off, gave them some stuff from their ship and managed to get them back on mainland Gran Canaria. They put them here in front of the old town hall 
and the locals were not very happy about it because they said in front of the cathedral and the town hall it shouldn't really be the land of dogs. The children that grew up here started playing with them and eventually the locals became to love them and they're now the face of the local beer. Literally walked around the corner and there they are. All right, that's enough of the old town. We just stopped by the tourism office. They give us a bag full of goodies, got a bottle, we're all branded up. Look at this tourist. I'm about to go catch some crocodiles, mate. <laughs> it looks like proper Australian in Gran Canaria. This is what we've been waiting for. You know, when in Spain, we're gonna get into the tapas. We've got a little seat here. It's a place called Piscos and Buches. Caterina, our tour guide, said these are called pinchos, and I think I'm just gonna pinch a few of these and get them on my plate. <laughs> We're on to the local, Lauren's on the local beer, the Tropical. Little taste test, good? So refreshing. refreshing. I'm on the local Clipper. He said it's like a local strawberry flavored soft drink. Oh, that is pure sugar. Go on, taste test, Loza. I don't know. Cowpole. 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 Don't it taste like cowpole? Do you think that tastes like cowpole? <laughs> <laughs> the Australian doesn't know the cow pole, but it does taste like a cow pole. Oh, it's good, good, good. It's strong, huh? Our tour guides there were super excited to see me trying the clipper. They said that this is the original. It was here before Coca-Cola, before any of the big brands came. So, clipper fresher. Clipper fresher? Completely forgot to film any of the starters, but as you can see, we are the Padron Pepper Kings. <laughs> they obviously went down well. I'll get something when the mains come out. Uh, the girls are on their second beer. Lauren, do not do that. <laughs> I just had some of these. Watercress and walnut croquettes. I can approve. Spanish omelette, let's go. So the omelette went down well, and now we are burning it off by having a little stroll down the beach. The girls are literally sandals off heading straight to the ocean might take a little dip I haven't got my swimming wear with me though so we'll see how we go I'm gonna leave them to it we've got a bit of free time this afternoon so hopefully I'll get in the hotel pool or down to the natural pools apparently there's some natural pools nearby but this place is called Las Canteras which means the quarry because apparently there's like a natural rock reef that drops from just here where you can go snorkeling where they used to dig out all the rocks and stuff back in the day I feel like I'm just popping up with random facts for you throughout this vlog, but our tour guide just said this guy here, I don't really follow football, or as they call it over here, soccer for some reason. Pepe Consalves. When the English first came over to Gran Canaria, they introduced football here to this guy, and he found Real Club Victoria, which was the first football team in Spain, would you believe it, on Gran Canaria, and they're linked to Newcastle United for some reason. So they wear the same black and white stripes. Just a little bit of fun there. Later's Pepe, for any of you football fans. All right, next stop. Hotel number two of the trip. It's called Rocca Negra. Straight into the bathroom. I feel like MTV Cribs, give you a little tour. Toilet in there somewhere. Coming down. Look at her, making herself comfortable. Hey, liven up. <laughs> Egg chair or the love chair? I don't know what we're gonna call that. Double bed, big TV, double sofa. The tropical lemon beers hit her. This cuddles you like a cloud. See you later. Take you outside. We've got a bit of free time this afternoon. Either gonna chill on our little balcony or probably head down to the pool and enjoy that view. Can you? Oh, I can't get out. <laughs> Can you just sit in that and you will understand exactly what I mean? Oh, it's bouncy. Oh. Don't it make you want to fall asleep? Oh, that is fantastic. It we really, need one of these, don't we? It hugs you, don't it? Oh. Told ya! Look at his face. I sound drunk. <laughs> Is it as cold as the hotel in Mallorca? No, no, this is this is warmer. That'll do. Coming for a swim? Nah. <laughs> you can sod off. Had a bit of a shit show, came down to the pool, asked for a pool towel, they said you gotta go up to reception. Went back up to reception, asked for a pool towel, they said they need a 10 euro cash deposit, which obviously we haven't got. So, a bit awkward, but we've come down with our shower towels. And now, just chill here for a bit. Well, they said it was quite windy in the Canary Islands <laughs> and they weren't wrong. All right there, Loza. <laughs> it's actually chilly, man. I don't know if you can see the, the palm trees, but they're getting blown all over the place. Towel keeps slapping me in the face. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think, unless it was just Lauren when I was asleep. <laughs> I think we'll head back up to the room. 
All right, evening number two, as you can see, Lauren's gone with another beautiful outfit. Thank you. And I have pulled out the same t-shirt and jeans as last night. <laughs> Come on! Rooftop bar, sunset, it's coming through now. Should be a good one. Oh my God, that is beautiful. <laughs> so that is known as the dragon's tail. Our guide was telling us on the way here because naturally, as you can see, it kind of just slides down like a dragon's tail. And this oh. is the setting for this evening. Go on, Otter. <laughs> Good? <laughs> so yeah, not a bad setting for this evening. I feel like I probably have pulled my shirt out, but I'll save that for last night. And the guys are just in here, as you saw, trying some little tapasy style stuff. I think we're going to sit down and have a nice dinner after the cocktails and mocktails are flowing. So I am on the Virgin Mojito? Mojito. What think. are you on? Uh, apple spritz. Big cheers. The hair's looking nice. <laughs> This is what it's like when I'm trying to take photos. <laughs> Honestly, Lauren's been chewing her hair. Cheers. Cheers. All night. Big view. And also, I'm going to spin it round. Here come the guys, but massive sunset going on. Absolute banger. Look at that. All right. Dinner time? Yeah, boy. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. <laughs> So we're down in the hotel restaurant tonight, big buffet style. We're over there in the corner somewhere and they've put out like a vegan spread. We've got Kaz and Lauren who are both vegan and then me and Michelle are vegetarian and they've put out like some vegan stuff on the table so that we can get involved on whatever's on the table. Oh lads, I'm gonna do a quick sign out because Lauren's getting ready for bed. I can't breathe, we've eaten too much and we're up early tomorrow. Well, not super early actually, we're gonna have breakfast and that, but it's a big day. Stay tuned. Hiking gear, swimming gear, bit of everything. Peace Should be out, fun. Brothers and sisters. <laughs> See you in the morning. <laughs> day three, second full day, but we'll call it day three. Bus has just dropped us off, the guys are getting ready. What we're doing today, we're gonna head from the north to the south of the island, and the guy said the word of today is contrast. So we're gonna be moving across and through the mountains, hopefully not too much walking, but a bit of up, a bit of down, heading all the way across. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. We do love a viewpoint, a bit of nature. I'm all for the swimming pools at the hotel, but nothing beats mountains and nature. Windy, I hope you can hear me okay. Uh, created by volcanoes over 3,000 years ago. Obviously the lava would come down and stream through and that's where you get the valleys from. Moving on. So we've come up to Casa Romantica next, the romantic house. Gonna have a little bit of brunch. Lauren's down there taking photos of the frangy panties. And I am hungry. Fun fact, before we go in, we're gonna do a little wine tasting and coffee tasting. There is no more further northern point in Europe that you can find coffee plantations. Sorry, I didn't know you were there. Don't worry, sweetheart. <laughs> that one's on a bit of a daze today. Can you explain that to me? Yeah, so if you're in, Nor if you're in Europe and you're trying to find a northern coffee plantation, uh -huh. this is the most northern so point. So basically there's no coffee plantations in Europe? No, I don't think so, because it's mainly in South America. Right. But this, apparently, there okay. is coffee here. Cool, I get it now. Also, outfit check. Gone for the athletic wear today with the handbag. <laughs> It lives here in Agaete, it's called Pepe Damaso and it's representing the valley, right? As the sunrise in the valley with the vineyards in here. And when they are good to pick, you cut them here and you take them to the supermarket. Banana talk. So they were just saying that it takes about nine months to a year to grow this amount of bananas. And then once this bunch is chopped, the whole tree has to be taken down because it's useless and it's used as fertilizer. But we already knew that, didn't we guys? Because you all went and watched the Madeira video from last week, didn't you? Smell. Oh, what is it? Smell citronella? No. Yeah. Is it citronella? Yeah. Come on. How nice. Oh, that's good. That's good. Rub it all over my body. <laughs> Get all the mosquitoes away. Well done. That was really good. Citronella. I don't think I'd have guessed that. I recognise the smell, but I don't think I'd have Do you know what I recognise it, it from? The candles in the back of the van. That's what To keep said. the mosquitoes out. Yeah, they put it in candles, don't they? We're learning here, you know. <laughs> What's that? This one, my love, is papaya. It is papaya. Yeah, yeah. Semi-ripe. Definitely nowhere near ripe. The girls have found the biggest veggie patch. Vegan heaven. <laughs> there's all sorts here. There's a pomegranate tree. There's like spring onions, tomatoes, beetroot, lettuce, cabbage. Apparently they're gonna fix us up a bit of salad and this is where they get all the produce from. So we think it's a beetroot. <laughs> what is it? You think it's a beetroot? You think it's a beetroot. Okay, bit of confusion here guys. If you could let me know in the comments, what is that? 
Hey, let us know what that tree is. That well. tree? I don't know if we've got any, like, what's it called? Horticultural people in the subscribers? There's got to be some green-fingered gardeners in here somewhere, but yeah, don't worry about the tree. More, more this purple one. I don't know if it's a beetroot or turnip, but let us know. Kale, kale. crispy kale in the oven, big chips. Oh, we cut, we like break it all up and we put it in the oven and have crispy kale. Oh no. We've literally lost the whole crew. We've just been Anything. getting a bit carried away in the veggie patch, but that is goals. Lauren was saying, if we ever manage to get a house, we've got to get a veggie patch like that in the garden. People like love it. A quiet oh, place. Yeah, I'm so fun. So, midday <laughs> wine and cheese tasting. This is not lunch. We're heading up, I think, a bit higher for lunch, but cheers. That is well fruity. Because we are an island. No. There was a, a, um, a big yeah. pest. Um, uh, like a, um, it was a flight pulling that through. Came from America. Uh, black pepper and pomegranate. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Kaz. <laughs> and enjoying the, the place around. Currently climbing up to 1,500 meters. Very twisty, windy roads. The, the old cheese is churning, I can feel it. <laughs> so hopefully we make it up there in one piece. How are you feeling? Lauren's peaceful, man. She's had three glasses of wine though, so she's all right in the back. So this is where we have landed for lunch. All right, love, have a little stretch out. And how is that for a view? Wow. So we've come up to a place called Parador Cruz de Tejeda. I hope I've pronounced it right, as with everything in these <laughs> overseas vlogs. What a view. 1,500 meters high, or around that height. There's an insane infinity pool. I won't pan it around, but yeah, I will pan it around. There's a couple of people in it. Don't want to get them too involved. And as you saw, we're in here somewhere, eating our lunch with that as a backdrop. Quick one for the foodies, they're nearly all gone, but gotta try something local whilst we're here. Apparently these little potatoes here are very typical of Gran Canaria. They're boiled in very salty water until <laughs> pretty much the water's disappeared. And I can vouch that they are very salty, but with the little coriander and pepper dips, they're very nice. Beef mango. Oh, it's all vegan. Yep, yeah. vegan. <laughs> <laughs> That's a happy Lauren. It's so happy when it's <laughs> not mm. This is naughty. Yeah, yeah. I so to finish off for the afternoon, we're getting into this little local delicacy. It's called Bien Me Sabe and translates to, it tastes good. Which again, I can vouch, it definitely does. Oh, still full up from lunch. <sighs> Told you it was gonna be a big day today. We're now around the middle of the island at pretty high peak. We're gonna try and get a little 10 minute walk in just to walk off lunch and hit another viewpoint. Here we go. So nice to get a bit of a, a walk in, stretch the legs and get amongst nature. And look at this campsite in the middle of this forest, in the middle of nowhere, with an unreal view. <sighs> Van life Europe, man. It keeps nudging us, don't it? So where we're standing right now is a place called Garignon. We're almost on top of Gran Canaria. We're, about, we're at about 1.7 right now. Back there, it's just under 2,000 meters, but we can't quite get up there. Uh, looking out over, we're standing on the edge, one of the largest collapsed craters in the world. Out there in the distance, not sure if you can quite see it, the peak there is Tenerife, another one of the Canary Islands. And that right there is 3,700 meters. It's actually the highest peak in Spain. All good, lol, taking in the views? Unreal, look at that. Sun shining, crystal clear day. You can see a little bit of cloud creeping around there, but honestly, our guide said sometimes you come up here and it's just complete mist and fogged out. So we're very lucky to have a day like this, got the sun cream on and gonna enjoy this before we head back down. I don't know if you quite saw that, you might have to jump back and watch it a few times, but that was a canary bird in the Canary Islands. If I get another one on the trip, I wanna try and capture it for you, a little yellow face thing, but that might be the best we get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to. There you go. <laughs> I was semi falling asleep, got semi stiff legs, and semi feeling a bit sick from the windy roads, but we had to stop off for one last epic view of the mountainous distance. Before we head down now, we're gonna head down south to a beach club, which I'm very, very looking forward to. So we have arrived at the beach club. As you can see, sun is setting harshly over there. Hopefully gonna jump in the water in a minute, but first, <laughs> more food, man. I thought it was gonna be a hectic day full of climbing mountains and stuff. All we've done is eat. But 
And I'm still hungry. <laughs> Lauren was saying on the way here, I can't wait to get there. We're having sushi. <laughs> we can't complain. Big veggie, what do you even call them? Ga like Gyozas, dumplings. What we got? Out of 10. That is unreal. Unreal out of 10. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I'm not great with the chopsticks, but... Oh, made that look good. Mm. Good flavours. Good flavours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is well nice. Alright, probably made it look way better on video than it was. Don't get me wrong, the food was delicious, but we had a bit of a fail. One, Lauren was looking at this beautiful view all evening, whereas I was <laughs> engrossed in the concrete power plant. Two, they brought out vegan rice and paella for the girls, but it was full of egg, so they, didn't, they couldn't eat it. And three, we were supposed to be here at like 6 p.m. so we could enjoy the sunset, take a swim, but we were two hours late. So we've only had an hour here just to cram down some sushi and a cocktail, and now we're heading to our next hotel. Touchdown Bohemia Sweets and Spa. Had a bit of a drama, put us in two separate rooms. Although, <laughs> it could have been, it could have done me a favor. No, we changed it over, we're heading up now to the room. Five star -er. Hopefully, a bit of luxury, and also got two nights here, so we can unpack the suitcase and chill out. We've heard it looks weird. Oh. <gasps> oh, it's like the red light district. It's like a sex dungeon. <laughs> Let's come in. Hey. Oh, my lord. Oh, I like the moon. Oh, wow. Oh, we'll have a bit of that. Oh, nice. Not what I was expecting. Not sure how I feel about these little fellas watching me get changed. Is that the bathroom? Yeah. I wasn't sure what to expect. I thought like five star, it would just be like your standard five star hotel. Not that we stay in them all the time, but yeah, it's very funky, isn't it? Let's have a look through here. I'm guessing that's the toilet. Walk in shower, bifolds. Oh, my lordy. This look is at the very chairs. weird. It's glowing in the dark. And then let me just get you the view. Okay. My goodness. How you doing? Nice to see this you. This moves. <laughs> what? This moves. Oh, okay. So, to give you an idea of where we are, we started here the other night. We've been exploring around here today, went to the centre, we've come down to the south, which is the tourist area, and we're in a place called Mas Palamas. In the popular area with tourists, as you can hear, of Gran Canaria. There's a door in the side of this cupboard. We've literally just been walking around pressing buttons. I'm trying to figure the lights out. It's pitch black in here. There's Honestly, it's like Narnia. Let me show you the wardrobe. You go that side. So this is the cupboard, wardrobe, but then you can, Hello, access, you can access it from that side as well. Also, show this look. I mean... It's really weird. That closes off and opens that side. It's in the way, but that closes that. That closes that. It's a bit like a Jungle. sex jail. I feel like I'm in an episode of the Crystal Maze. We're, we're gonna have to get out of here at some point on a time limit. Oh, I don't like it. Like Squid Games. Oh, this is horrible. All right, we've finally calmed down. We've half figured out what's going on. At least I've got a control panel here so I can figure out all the light switches and stuff. We're gonna sign out and we've got two more days in Gran Canaria. Absolutely knackered. Uh, it's been a big day, but it's been fun. It's been enjoyable. We've seen some beautiful scenery, that's for sure. And we'll pick this up bright and early and see what we can get up to tomorrow. Good morning from the breakfast buffet. Lawrence is dishing up some bruschetta with a balsamic. And I'm gonna take you outside and show you the epic view. Here we go. The south of Gran Canaria beaches is what we look for. And the sand dunes, which we're gonna be exploring tomorrow at some point. But first things first, food and water. And then we've got a little rum and wine tour this morning, which should be interesting. Hopefully some free time this afternoon to get in there. Also, just found out as Lauren nearly finishes it, this is a typical Spanish breakfast in the south. A little bruschetta. I think I was born in the wrong country. <laughs> Hola! <laughs> First stop of the day, quick stop at a banana plantation. Did you know, fun fact, there's over 400 types of banana in the world. I think I've only ever tried one. There was one back there that was called apple banana. So it's like a mixture of like apple and banana. Very strange. There's a few different types here. Fat ones, thin ones, small ones, tall ones. But they're taking us down to the manor house now where we're gonna try some. So when at the banana plantation, you gotta get involved with a little banana smoothie, I'm assuming, and some kind of banana bread or banana cake. Taste test coming soon. All right. Oh, that's a good smoothie. Oh, Lauren, what is it? Banana wine. Banana wine. Talk me through it. It's nice and sweet. It tastes a bit like um, prosecco. <laughs> 
Yeah, she's double fisting yeah. and she's got a banana oh, in her hand at the nice. same time. Yeah. yeah. Passion fruit one. Passion fruit wine. That's bad boy. Might have to get a little jug and take it home. <laughs> Next up on today's tour with Charlie and Lauren of Gran Canaria is Arihucas Rum Distillery. Another one that's not really up my street, but... But we're getting wavy. <laughs> Maybe she can uh, have a little tipple. Tipple? <laughs> and, oh, it's cool, tipple. Have a little tipple. Have a little nightcap, babe. Let's sell it, yeah? That's all it's right. So every single barrel is made with American gold. Right, I am obviously no expert in this industry, but there seems like a fair few barrels of liquid dotted around. And as we come through here, the guy said that this stuff that's caged up is like the Champions League level of rum. Some of it's up to like 40 years old. And he said, just these barrels alone, there's about 1.5 million euros worth of rum. So I'm gonna let the little group go through. Don't know how I get it through customs, but I might try and steal a little sipple of this. Right, I've rehearsed this a few times. Let's see if I can get it right. So in here is where they pull the sugar cane from. Rum is essentially made from sugar cane. So it comes down these pipes, it's stripped, and that's where they pull all the juice. The juice is then put into these huge 31 litre containers, canisters, whatever you want to call them, where it is fermented. They add a bit of water, they add a bit of yeast, and then once they have the fermented, they called it sugar cane wine, they pull it through here to the distillery. And that is where you get the true spirit of the rum. Don't shoot me if I'm wrong, you're talking to a teetotal person, but I'm trying my best to relay the rum information. Coming through now into the workshop, which I didn't realize you needed a workshop because they ship all the barrels in fresh. So they don't make them from scratch, but sometimes they get a little leaky from the cold and the hot weather and they have to repair them. And they also strip them down to try and recycle as much as possible. They said this year they broke down a few barrels and made a rum barrel Christmas tree. I'm learning more than I thought I would and I'm actually finding this quite interesting. I'm going to have to shout over this bit, we've come through to the bottling area. I don't know if you can see the machine here, but the count is currently on 14,800. They said usually they get around 20 to 30,000 bottles per day. Going in the bottle and then the screws, the lid's going on. Can see it through there? Yeah. Also, they only harvest for two months a year. So between like March to April time, they collect all the sugar cane, and then the rest of the year is just maintaining and bottling up the rum for the rest of the year. I'm gonna show you some of the rums they produce now. We've never been to any kind of factory or production line like this before, so it's very interesting to see how it's all made. Fair to say we're easily pleased. The simple things in life. Sweeter than this one. Creams like Baileys with rum, milk and flavours. Chocolate. All right, Lauren and Kaz are going in on the banana. Banana rum, right? Let's see how it goes down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. 20%. 20 percent. 20% and they said, I think you could drink a lot of it. Hey, hello, buddy. Final stop of the day, yeah? Final stop of the day. I'm not going to lie. I was feeling it a bit. Needed some food, but of course. When we find a pup, it always livens us up a bit. So we've pulled in this little local family kind of vineyard, winery. As you can see, the grapes are all growing on the way in. Gonna do a bit of wine tasting. Obviously the girl's looking forward to that. <laughs> and hopefully get a bit of grub. So the place is called Senorio de Cabrera. And it's a pretty cool story. The guys here, it's just a couple, they bought this plot of land about 10 years before they retired with the idea of having a, like a vegetable patch and a little retirement home, growing some veggies. And then one thing led to another. They planted some grapes, grew in a little vineyard, and then ended up taking the grapes to a local guy to try and produce some wine, some DIY wine. The guy wasn't very impressed with the wine, but he said, if you let me come to your place, I'll show you how to nurture and harvest the grapes properly. And then this is exactly what they've done. So they now produce about 4,000 bottles of wine a year from their little retirement home. And they've even got a little coffee plantation where they're drying out the coffee beans at the minute. They've got mandarin and they've got this. <laughs> you can see the guys just jumping in at the background. They've built like a little train that goes up and down to carry the fruit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure it's used to having people in there. It's not exactly Alton Towers, but what a great little creation in his backyard. They said it's used to carrying like 25 boxes of fruit up and down. I've pulled the short straw. I'm going to have to walk up to the top. Although at this rate, I might just overtake them. <laughs> How was that? <laughs> you made it. You made it. <laughs> 
so the lady just opened up, she was going, Chiquita, Chiquita, Chiquita. I think it means small. This is a little wine cellar. Got the air con going, it's freezing in here. This and is my Chiquita wine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lauren don't know the word Chiquita when it comes to drinking wine. <laughs> but this is cool. A lot different to the huge rum distillery that we were just at. Yeah, very local, family run. And now, let's get some family hearty food in us. Look at this little setting. Hello, sweetheart. Hello, darling. Hello, darling. Look at this. I was so close to getting food. We're back in the wine cellar because the owner has offered the girls to drink some straight out of the keg. So he's just pulling some out as we speak. He showed the one that <laughs> and now Lauren's going to give it a go. Go on, Lauren. Fresh from the keg. Is that bien? No. I think everyone's a bit hungry. We're getting into the local oranges before the stuff comes. <laughs> Fresh from the tree. But it's a good orange. Gracias. Wow. Mmm. Carrots, watercress, pumpkin. Mucha carne, mucho pollo, mucho. Wow. What a feed. What an awesome afternoon. I didn't catch much of it on uh, camera, but the owners have been out back and forth having a bit of banter. Having a bit of banter with us, and now they've brought out the homemade liquor. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. They've been dishing out the wine like it's going out of fashion. And now, look, uh, she's saying, Gia, salut. No, not for me. For you. For you. Okay. Una, <laughs> dos. Para arriba, para arriba, para abajo, para para abajo, para Good energy. Huh? <laughs> hey, Katrina. She's plastered. <laughs> Katrina, the, the girl that's looking after us from Visit Gran Canaria. I think, I think she said she smashed. The tourism board lady smashed. So I'm going to put the camera down. Hopefully, we make it home alive. <laughs> Lauren's trying to get herself adopted now by the both of them. A good banter. We were supposed to be back at the hotel at 4 p.m. It's now quarter past six. Uh, this is what it's all about for the culture. Doing it for the culture. We'll take an orange for the road. We'll catch you back at the hotel. <laughs> oh, here's the boys. <laughs> <laughs> home sweet home we've got an hour before we're supposed to meet for dinner but i just want to get in the pool or spa or something trunks are going on i just have to show you this laura's brought home all the bananas just in case we get hungry somehow we're not gonna be hungry but just in case we've got all the bananas that is what i'm talking about the smells are Hitting me with a little bit of tester. Oh, it's warm. A little water fountain in the background. Lauren's checking out all the rooms. She said there's a sauna and steam, so I'm gonna put the camera down. Probably pick this up in about a half hour once we're fully relaxed. Happy? Sauna. <laughs> I love the smell. Final night with the guys. No one's taking selfies yet. <laughs> Big sunset mission and cocktails on the roof. Good evening, look at us scrubbed up. We're actually mix match, like Lauren's gone beige on the bottom, black on the top. I've gone black on the bottom, beige on the top. His and hers. What are you drinking? Mezcal. 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 No. They said it's like some kind of tequila, but like expensive fancy tequila. Well strong. Did you like it? <laughs> she went, see. <laughs> This is the setting for this evening. As you can see, the guys chilling and catching up over there. You've got mountains and uh, some hotels in the background that way. And then over there, the view from breakfast out to the ocean and of course the sand dunes. Which we are going to check out tomorrow. The famous sand dunes of Gran Canaria. We fly out this time tomorrow, so tomorrow evening. So we've got a full day still to explore. Uh, but tonight it's cocktails, a little bit of dinner because it's our last night together with the gang. Yeah, <laughs> Oh, if 
That was exhausting. I'm absolutely beat. The food was delicious, but it took like an hour and a half to come out. Oh God. <laughs> we waited an hour and a half for the five star meal. Now I've got a tiny little curry. I'm full. I've got a big pesto spaghetti, which was delicious. We're going to sign out. Absolutely knackered. It's uh, 10 past 11. We had another Burger King. <laughs> no one wants to run out and grab some snacks. <laughs> so we might have to run downstairs and find her something. But we will pick this up in the morning for the final day in Gran Canaria. Final day in Gran Canaria. Oh, let's see what we can get up to. Quick stop, this has woke me up. Walking along the sand dunes of Gran Canaria, right over that way, Katarina was just saying, is the Sahara Desert about 200 kilometers. So it's the same sand as the Sahara Desert, just on a little island. Epic view. I think we're coming back here late this afternoon or going to the beach or something, but for now, we've got to shoot because everyone's waiting to do yoga. Wow. Right, lads, got a bean bag, a little karate belt, and a bobbly ball. Not sure quite what we've signed up for here, but it should be fun. It's a foot massager. Of course it is. And time to get involved with a cushion. I mean, the view and the location is absolutely splendid, but I can't help but think I'm in an episode of Benidorm or meet the fuckers when they go and do the yoga. Moving over from the yoga to the massage place now, I didn't get you really a canary bird, but I have found you a woodpecker. Look at that. I've genuinely never seen a woodpecker before. Okay, massage time, I'm going in. Lauren is not, she's opted just to chill by the pool for a little while, so camera's going down. I'll catch you in 25 minutes. All right, job done, I'm half asleep. It's always the same with a massage, isn't it? This is the setup, <laughs> I thought I'd catch this for you. Old Henrique, I think his name was, sorted me out. He said my back was bad. He said there's a lot of tension and stress, so I need to, I guess I need to chill out a bit more. I don't know what's going on with my back, um, but let's go find Lauren and then uh, grab some lunch. Here she is, the little sun worshiper. Oi, oi. <laughs> Peace out. <laughs> Tired? Yeah, boy. Chilling. I'm gonna get sun creamed up, get out of this, and get my swim gear on. Forgot to give you the name of the hotel. It's up there. Seaside Palm Beach. There's about three or four pools here, so we're gonna have a chilled afternoon, grab some lunch before heading to the airport. <laughs> right, guys, that is us. We are in our happy place. Can't see anything. Can't see ya, but feeling the sun and the palm tree vibes. Check this out. So we've got a few hours now before we head to the airport. We are going to take this opportunity to chill and sign out from Gran Canaria. Could have done with a bit more of this on the trip, couldn't we? 100%. <laughs> but we can't complain. We've been around and part of the job is to show you the less visited places. But on this occasion, this is definitely going to be most our favourite spot. Yeah. <laughs> the most visited. We'll catch you on the next one. Next one is a big one. Keep it some. Surprise next week. Ooh, cheeky boy. See you there. Catch you on the next one. <laughs>